Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about sculpting polygons. This is a really cool tool. Very cool. Now, given it's not going to be the kind of thing you're going to be using a lot in a game engine, right? simply because for it to look good, you have to have a very high right. face count. So you're not going to be using this too much for Unreal models, but again, it's just sort of an introduction to sculpting, just so that you're aware of it, so if you wanted to use it at some point, you'd be able to. It's there. So... As you can see, I've got a sphere in my scene, and under my Edit Polygons menu, I can come down to the Sculpt Polygons tool, or I can access it here on my shelf as well, so I could just click it here. Now, for this to make any kind of sense whatsoever, let me go ahead and bring up the tool settings. And there's a lot of these settings. I'm going to go over uh, essentially all of the ones under the Sculpt tab so that you can see what they do, and then just uh, a couple of things under Display to make our lives easier. In fact, let me go ahead and jump over to the Display tab. I'm going to switch off Show Wireframe, okay, just so that we can see just the object itself. But really, we're going to be focusing only on the, the Sculpt tab in this video. All right. So from the top, we have Radius U and Radius L. Radius U is actually the one that we're focusing on. What this is going to do is control the size of our brush. So as I bring this up, you'll notice our brush gets massive. Way big. And as I bring it down, we can make it very, very tiny. So let's go ahead and drag to about a, a medium range, something about inside of here. Now, radius L is going to be sort of an opposite radius that only comes into play if you're using a... Uh, pressure-sensitive device, such as a Wacom tablet. Okay. So this would be like the minimum uh, radius and then the maximum radius. Okay. And the harder you push, you'll work your way up to radius U, down from radius uh, L, and so forth. So really, since I'm just using a mouse, I'm not using a Wacom tablet, I'm only interested in radius U. U. Now down from here, we have opacity. Opacity is essentially a multiplier of the max displacement. So right now, we have a max displacement of 0 0.40 centimeters, and I can take my opacity and take percentages of that number, rather than try to fine-tune the max displacement. Like I say, if I wanted this to be 0 0.20, I'd, instead of trying to drag that down so accurately, I could just take opacity and drag it down to about 50% of 0.4. Right. Makes perfect sense. And then... Uh, from here, let me go ahead and just kind of demonstrate how this sculpting thing sort of works. We also have uh, sh brush shapes, so it's a lot like Photoshop. We have a, a big, thick feathered brush, a thin feathered brush, a thick brush without feathering, and so on all the way down. Right. You can just click on whichever one you want to use. I'll be sticking with this uh, large feathered brush for now. Now, let me go ahead and show how this is working. Uh, we'll start with the push operation, and I'll click and drag on my surface. Now, and just you're pushing very quick. Now, as I rotate around, you can see that I've just pushed an indention into my surface. A lot like working with clay. Yes. Let me go ahead and undo that, and I'm going to bring my opacity way down into something more subtle. And it takes longer to... Uh do that first effect. Exactly. So now I'm almost going to bring down my max displacement and bring my opacity very far down. And now we're just going for a very subtle indention. So now I've already got this sort of crushed, almost like almost an organic <coughs> surface. And you'll find that Artisan will really help you. Uh, I just called it Artisan. The sculpt <laughs> tool is really going to help you get an organic uh, surface using polygons. Now, I said Artisan a second ago, I'm not trying to confuse anybody. The Sculpt Surfaces tool, or Sculpt Polygons tool, is actually an extension of a tool inside of Maya known as Artisan. Artisan. So, uh, if I call it that, don't get scared or anything, but you can see that I am pushing indentions into this shape. I can also pull out of this shape, so I could pull a lump out if I wanted to. <laughs> so maybe if I was feeling, uh, particularly clever. I could come in here maybe and decrease my brush size. Now, a quick thing, because I do like hotkeys, you can take your brush size, hold down the B key, and drag left and right with the middle mouse button, mm -hmm. and uh, interactively control your brush size. So I could, for example, maybe pull out a couple of shapes like that. Maybe push in a couple of shapes directly beneath. Go back to pull, maybe pull out some sort of a nose-looking shape, and maybe push in a mouth of some kind, and then pull out a chin, and I'm already starting to create sort of a face. Yeah. This is a lot like sculpting out of clay. You're going to find this is uh, pretty intuitive. It's it's nice to work with, a, a sort of a, a glitzy tool and kind of glamorous, um, but... 
practically you won't be using it that much for Unreal models. No, again, because you have to have such a high amount of definition and detail in it. Exactly. So we have the ability to push, to pull. We can smooth out our operations if we want to, and this is going to be a little bit tricky to see, but uh, as I drag across, you'll notice I'm really smoothing out that eyebrow, smooth out this one as well, and so on and so forth. So I'm really just kind of averaging out the locations of my vertices, and if I smooth too much, I actually start to Loose. wear away all of my detail. Then I have erase. This allows me to erase my brush strokes down to the original uh, object, but you have to be kind of wary of this. So here we are, we're erasing. Let me go ahead and crank up my opacity to make it work a little better. So you'll notice my nose is starting to disappear. He's a leper. Or something. And erase maybe one of the eyebrows and so on and so forth. So you can see how you can erase your strokes away. Uh, you can switch on automatic smoothing if you want to. For now, I'm just going to leave that off. We also have sculpt variables for which direction that we'd like to sculpt. Now, by default, this is set to the normal, which means, like in this case, if we were to be pushing, we'd be pushing directly in toward the center of the object or pushing in, like, sort of the opposite direction of the surface normals, if you will. We can uh, sculpt based on the first normal, which will just record the first normal, say like over here where we're pushing in toward the center, but we'll push in that direction for the rest of the faces as well. Okay. So like over here toward the side, we're still kind of pushing these guys off to the left, and as we rotate around, you can kind of see that. Then we have view, which is just going to push these faces inward, inward. perpendicular from the view. So it's just like straight in from the screen. We have uh, the various axes, so we can push uh, directly in the x-axis if we want to, which is going to give some very strange results, uh, just in y or just in z. Again, we can adjust the max displacement if we want to, which is how much these things will be changed. Like, I could crank this up to just atrociously high levels and just cave my surface in. <laughs> I mean, just cause Ouch. severe problems here. <laughs> And then down from here, we have uh, the surface itself. And we can choose to update the reference surface on each stroke, or we can update it manually. So what exactly does this do? Well, let me switch over to pull to make this make a little more sense. And let me bring my max displacement down to something just a tad more manageable, say something like 0.2. And I'll bring my opacity down as well. Let's test that out. That looks pretty good. So the reference uh, surface is going to be the surface upon which your strokes are placed. Now, right now, this is set to update on each stroke, which means if I were to come in here and, say, build up this area just by dragging my mouse over and over and over and over to get this sort of a, a lump, Right. now, as, since that stroke is done, this reference surface has been updated. Mm -hmm. So now the next time I paint, I will be building up from this surface. All right. So now I'm going even further. And now I'm going even further. So each time I click, I'm actually pulling out further and further. So if I rotate around, we've really got yeah. a major hill we're starting to pull out of this guy's head. It's not the tumor. If we, <laughs> if we switch this off, we can go in here and we can paint out, say, a lump. But since we're n we haven't updated the reference surface, if we continue painting, it's going to pull out to the exact same displacement right. level. So we're not adding our strokes on top of each other right now. We're just simply adding to that same level of detail. Mm. Now if we want to, we can click Update and Update manually. Now this is the new reference surface, so we can build out from here. Okay. Makes sense. So, I mean, very quickly, you could come up with some very nice organic surfaces, but... Again, I, I stress this, uh, that using this for Unreal wouldn't be very practical because to get nice results from it, your face counts have to be very, very high. So really, that's going to cover everything that I wanted to talk about with sculpting. All right. So thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you.